What's going on YouTube? Static here. A couple of weeks ago I brought you a tutorial on how to make short range wireless redstone and so I thought I'd expand on that today by showing you how to make long range wireless redstone. Now, just got a quick demonstration set up here. As you can see in the hills there, I've got a bunch of redstone lamps, some on the left, some on the right, and those are triggered with these buttons here. So the button on the left triggers the one on the left, and the button on the right triggers the one on the right. The button in the middle resets them both, so it turns them both off. And just to show you that there's no funny business going on here, you'll see that this platform that I'm on is floating in midair, and there's actually no redstone on the thing. So... Just to show you, you hit the left button and the left set of lights turns on. Hit the right button and the left one turns off, the right one turns on. You hit the middle one and both of them turn off. I want to just quickly note that I wasn't the one who discovered this, but I can't be 100% sure who did. The first place I saw it though was on a tutorial by Bakasan16, and so I'll add a link to that video in the description. Now, the reason this works has to do with how Minecraft calculates the hitboxes for updating objects, such as that glass pane on top of the piston over there. So basically what Minecraft does is it takes the hitbox information from the most recently updated hitbox of that type, so for example, the hitbox of glass panes, and it applies it to the updating object. So for example, if I was to update the hitbox of one of the glass panes in front of me, it would apply that information to the glass pane on top of the piston. Now the hitbox of an object can be updated in many ways, such as simply looking at the hitbox. So you'll see that when we look at this glass pane, a little black box gets put around the, the glass pane, that's its hitbox. Uh, also by pushing against an object, so by pushing against these glass panes we update its hitbox, and also by shooting it with an arrow. So what this means is that when we look at these glass panes, Minecraft is going to take the information from this hitbox and apply it to the glass pane on top of the piston. So you'll notice that when we look at the block underneath this glass pane, you'll see that the glass pane here only has a hitbox in the left hand side of the box. So when we look at this glass pane, the glass pane on top of the piston has a hitbox on the left and thus can push up the the boat. However, you'll notice the glass pane on the right hand side here only has a hitbox in the right hand side of the block, meaning that if we were to look at the, this glass pane, the glass pane on the piston would not have a hitbox on the left and would not be able to hold up the boat. So as you see, when we look at this glass pane, the boat falls down. When we look away, it goes up. Same as when we push against this particular glass pane. Shooting an arrow into the glass pane will also achieve the same result, with the ad added benefit that we don't have to continue doing the action. One thing to note though is that the three ways of updating the hitbox send different strengths of signals, which can then be overridden by stronger signals. So for example, looking at a, a hitbox sends a weaker signal than standing on or walking into a hitbox, so therefore it looking at a hitbox can be overridden by standing or walking into, and standing on or walking into a hitbox can be overridden by shooting a hitbox with an arrow. Making one of these circuits is very easy. All you need is a building block of some type, your three basic redstone components, sticky piston, glass panes or iron bars work as well, a wooden pressure plate and a boat. So we're going to start by making the receiver and to make the receiver what you want to do is place down a sticky piston facing up, place a glass pane or iron bars on top of that. To either side of the glass pane or iron bars you want to place two of your building block and then on the furthest one of your building blocks from the glass pane you want to place a wooden pressure plate and place a boat in between the two. And so what this means is that when the glass pane goes up if it's able to hold the boat up, the boat will stay off the pressure plate. If not, the boat's going to fall down and activate the pressure plate. So this pressure plate is where we're going to be drawing our signal from. You can draw your signal either from underneath the pressure plate or using a redstone torch on the side of the block that, that the pressure plate is resting on. Depending on where you bring the signal out, it will be in an opposite state. Now that we've got that, we want to place in our redstone clock to get the piston moving. And so how we make this is one block away from... Leaving a one, one block gap from the piston, you're going to place two of your building block, then one, and then two, and just knock out those corners. Once you've got this, just place your redstone repeater in the middle there like so, and set it to the third delay setting. We're going to place a piece of redstone dust down here, place your two torches on the side, and then one piece of redstone dust connecting up to the piston. And that's your receiver, very simple. 
Now if you'd like to use more than one frequency like we have for our lamp walls over here, it's very simple. All you need to do is make another receiver oriented differently. So on this side, the uh, receiver is oriented so that the boat is on the right hand side of that glass pane. And over here, we've got it oriented so that the boat is on the left hand side of the glass pane. Now, you can also orient the signal so that the boat is on the front or the back of the glass pane, meaning that for glass panes, you've got a total of four frequencies that you can use very easily and for the iron bars you've got a total of four frequencies that you can use very easily. Now you can expand this beyond the four frequencies for the glass panes and four for the iron bars by using corners and the like. However this becomes quite complicated and requires things like binary decoders and so on and so forth. It should be noted that although the effective range for this circuit is quite large it isn't infinite. Um, if you go far enough away so that the transmitter, being this glass pane wall here, or the receiver, being this, the actual circuit itself, if you go far enough away that either of those are unloaded, the signal will not be sent. You need to be within range so that both the transmitter and the receiver are loaded at the same time. Uh, what I mean by loaded is that you'll notice that beyond that tree line over there, you can't see any trees behind it, even though there are actually trees behind it. Minecraft has not loaded those chunks. So the same goes for the, uh, the transmitter and the receiver here. If you go too far away, Minecraft will unload the chunks that they are in, and the signal will not work. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I would really appreciate a like, so show that like button some love, and I'll see you guys next time.